Hello, how are you? She's connecting. Uh oh, what just happened? <laughs> hey, Elena, how are you? Hello. Hi. Elena, are you a frequent junior badge uh, attendee? Yeah, you've been before? Awesome. I haven't been on in a while, so I don't always remember everybody's face. So welcome. So we're gonna give uh, one more minute maybe for people to join and then we will get started. My name is Lauren Pace from Girl Scouts of South Carolina Mountains to Midlands and I'm the Outdoor Programs Manager. But in my previous life, I was a um, equestrian manager, which means equestrian is a fancy name for horses. So I managed the horse farm at my last camp. Um, so of course, that's always fun. Horses are amazing. And I love the fact that Wayback usually has horses during the summer. Um, so if you're very interested in horses, next summer you can check out the horses at Wayback. So that would be fun. So it is 3.02. We'll give them a minute. Sometimes people are late. Now, Elena, did you bring any, uh, oh, did you bring a picture of a horse or a horse stuffed animal or anything like that? That's okay. I'll be right back. Okie dokie. <laughs> Might be a quiet group today. <laughs> it probably will. <laughs> and she's back. Oh my gosh. Hey, did you make that? Let's do this real quick. Oh, you're muted. Let me unmute you. And I'm riding a horse named Rony. What's his name? Rony. Rony? Oh, cool. I didn't hear you before. Did you make that? Yeah. How did you make it? Well, I got a horseshoe. Okay. And some beads from them. Cool. And they also took a picture of me and my horse so I could and printed it out so I could put it in the middle. And then I just backed the thing with blue paper. Wow, that is so cool. Do you keep it on your wall, like in your bedroom? Um, I keep it in the guest room. Nice. That's awesome. I need to make one of those. I don't have one of those. I have a couple horseshoes, though. For sure. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. You're going to have to tell us a little bit more about Brony in a little bit. All right. Oh, she's gone. She'll be back. <laughs> we lost her again. <laughs> yeah, I think she went to go put it back. Oh, gotcha. When she comes back, we will get started. Ha, ah, there she is. Oh, that is, I love it. It's a briar horse. That's so cool. Awesome. All right, so Elena, we're gonna get started. We, I'm gonna close that down. So today on Girl Scouts Connected, we are going to be doing um, one partial step to the junior badge for horseback riding. Um, it's not included in the title, but it is important for us to know about horses um, as, you know, as they are in, as animals. Um, so we're going to talk today about a horse of a different color. Um, it's kind of a play on words because um, it was actually in the Wizard of Oz. Um, it's just kind of a 
common turn of phrase. So a horse of a different color. So today, uh, let's get started with, click. We're going to get started with the promise and the law. And I actually have them switched. I'm so sorry. But we're going to start with the promise with our three fingers up. We're going to cross our uh, pinky and our thumb. And we're going to set the promise. So on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times. And to live by the Girl Scout law. Oh, perfect. And the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, and friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do. And to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Okay. So the badge as a, as a whole, the junior badge, the steps are as follows. So know the basics of horseback riding. Uh, step two, take care of a horse and learn about safety. Step three, prepare for your ride. Step four, practice your ride. And step five, go for a ride. Um, today, of course, online, we can't do some of those, but we are getting ready to go. Um, so at some point we can get out there and um, love on some horses. So our, the purpose of this badge, um, when we've earned this badge, we will know what it takes to be a good rider from understanding horse body language to controlling the horse's speed while riding. So that's the goal is to be able to take care of our horses and ride really well. So the activities for, day, for today, step one, a part of this is to know the basics of horseback riding. So horseback riding comes back to the horse and the horse is the most important part of all of this. So we are gonna do, we're gonna start from kind of the most basic thing going on up. So the most basic thing with colors of horses are the face markings and the leg markings. So those are very individualized. So they're very different for each horse. Now they can get a lot of patterns from their mom and their dad that'll make um, colorations on their face, but they're going to be individuals at the end of the day, whether that's their mom and their dad that give them characteristics. And the same with their legs. So any horse can have any face marking and any leg marking dependent on their mom and dad. Um, so if my mom didn't have any freckles and my dad didn't have any freckles, I wouldn't have any freckles. But if there's a variation, so my mom has a few, my dad has a few, they might be different colors, I might have different colors. So when it comes together, you can have a big variation between everybody. And that's what makes everybody great because they're all individuals. And the same for legs. So some people have um, really long fingers, some people have short fingers, short fingernails, all of those variations make them all different. And so any horse can come out uh, with different ones and it's usually impacted by their parents, okay? So they're all called different things. So if it has just the wide, kind of wide uh, strip down the face, um, if it's wide, it's called a blaze. If it's small, it's called a stripe. Um, you can have a bald face, which is mostly white. And there's different ones that go even after this, like a bonnet and a medicine hat. So they all, there's way more than this, and some people like to call them all weird different things, but these are the most basic ones. And then on the legs, as you get higher and higher, it's a stocking, and then it goes down to like a half stocking, a sock, and then it has a coronet, and like um, a partial, and stuff like that. But most of the time, you're gonna find a lot of stockings and socks, and, um, and so that'll give them variation. Usually if they have a white leg, they have a white hoof that goes along with it. And if they have a, a darker leg, like the last picture, they're gonna have a darker hoof. Um, but they can also have different colored hooves too. So they can have a lot of cool different little stripes and stuff in their hooves too, okay? So that's the most basic thing and that's the same for everybody. Now is where we get kind of different. So in breeds of horses, there's a, a lot of different breeds. So what do you think breeds are, Elena? Um, the different 
types of horses that you can have. Perfect. So there are different types of horses. So each different uh, each horse or type of horse is good at different things. Um, just like with dogs, we might have a Chihuahua or we might have a St. Bernard. There's going to be different types. So you definitely know there's many horses, which are like the Chihuahuas of uh, horses, or you have like the Clydesdale, which is featured here, or the Shire horse, which are huge. They're the St. Bernards of horses. So there's a, all different sizes and all different breeds. We're going to talk about a couple of breeds later, but they are all good at different things and they're all um, kind of known for different things. Um, and some people prefer one versus the other. So um, they're just a little different. Some, um, they're like, don't quote me, but I think there's about 150 different types of breeds out there. Um, and then of course those types, those are just the main, but you can cross breed them too. So you, have you ever heard of um, like a Labradoodle? It's a Labrador and a Poodle. You can do the same thing with horses and they can be a little bit across. So one of the most um, famous, famous types of crossbreeding is Arabian and quarter horse, which are our two top ones, and they call it a Corab. So um, it's just a cute little nickname. Mother was an Arabian or quarter horse, and the dad was the opposite. So there are a lot of variations out there, and they're all good at different things. Okay. So. Here we're going into colors. So these, these nine here, there's nine on the next page. So there's actually 18. So we'll get to them in just a, fin, um, a minute. We'll get to the next one, 18, nine and nine, yeah, 18, okay, math. Um, so a lot of breeds can be any color, just like me. Of course, I have blonde hair now, but I can dye it. Horses can't really dye their hair. They can kind of. Um, but not when they're born. So I am, of course, born with brown hair and I dye my hair blonde. So they're all different and it usually depends on your mom and your dad, usually. So if your mom has brown hair and your dad has brown hair, you probably have brown hair. So when you look at a horse, you probably know that its mom or its dad probably had a similar color. So a chestnut is brown with a brown mane and tail. And that's where most of the variations um, consist between the body color and the mane and the tail color, okay? So the liver chestnut is going to be a darker brown with the blonde mane and tail. The bay is brown with the black mane and tail. You can find a chestnut, uh, it's actually called a sorrel. It's a dark, it's a brown, and it has a blonde mane and tail. So it's like a liver, but lighter. So it would be also in this lineup of kind of like color cousins. The next one, the seal brown bay, that's a very dark brown, okay? Uh, it's so dark it's hard to see, but we're not going to call it black because it's not black yet. Then we have gray, which usually has a white, um, white undertone in its nose, a rose gray, which is going to have a pink undertone. There's going to be flea bitten, which has speckles. Oh, we have a chat. Hello, hello. We have dapple gray, which is going to be a darker gray with spots, and then a white. So there's not going to be a lot of white horses out in nature. Do we know why? They're going to be the white horses. Usually they're albino. Why don't we have a lot of albino horses out in nature? Does anybody know why? You can chat us or unmute. Anybody? I can like get one to work also. What did you say? I got my computer um um gym to work, so I got that working. Awesome. So, do we know why there's not a lot of white horses out, uh, or naturally albino white horses out? It's because they get so sunburned, it's really hard for them to take care of their skin, especially if there's not a lot of trees. So you're not going to find a lot of white or albino horses because it damages their skin. And so, um, and they don't survive very well. Um, so you're not going to find a lot of those out in the world. Okay. 
Our next set of colors, let me find my, okay, so we have, these are on the lighter side of our color scheme. The Palomino can be any tan color on the body, a darker tan, almost a khaki color, or to a light creamy color, and it's gonna have a white mane and tail. Whereas the opposite, it can, it can be a buckskin or a dun, they're similar, um, and they're in that same line, it is they have a creamy body and a dark mane and tail. And then very far on that other side of the spectrum is a cream mellow, where it's gonna have a creamy body and a creamy mane and tail. And on the next level are my favorite horses, are roans. So there's a strawberry roan, of course, that has the white frosting all the way around. It's a red body. The bay roan, which is a brown, brownish red with a dark mane and tail, and that's my absolute favorite is a bay roan, and then it's got a, it has frosting. And then we have the blue roan, which is like a gray that has that white frosting all over its body, um, and that's my second favorite. Of course, like I promised, down at the bottom, we have a black horse, and that's gonna have a black body. They're not gonna be mixed with any brown hairs, like that other one, it's gonna be solid, sleek black and a black mane and tail. The next net on the list is the dun and it's gonna have a little bit of white speckling all in its mane and tail. So it's kind of got highlights and frosting. And then on the very end of the spectrum of the black is gonna be that gruya, which is a frosty middle with a black mane and tail and it's got frosting in its mane too. So they're all kind of um, color cousins if they're in that same line. So Elena, do you want to tell us what's your favorite color? I can flip back if it's not on this page. I like the blue roan. The blue roan? And what about your horse that you rode? Um, is it Brony? Brony? Yeah, he was named Brony because that's what color he is. Oh, he's a roan? Oh, perfect. Roni. Okay. I thought it had to be in the front. Roni. That's a great name for a roan horse. And that's, uh, that's beautiful. All right. We lost her, but we'll keep going. All right. So our first horse breed that we're going to talk about is the quarter horse. So he was actually on a page a couple, a uh, couple ago. Now the quarter horse is a breed that's known for its stocky build, okay? He's gonna be a very well-rounded horse all over. They're easily muscled. They can be from medium height to taller. Um, they can go any range. They can be a little bit shorter than 15 hands or maybe a little bit taller, but it's, that's mostly the range is right there in that medium to tall range. Their size is gonna be about 850 pounds to 1200 pounds. And that's really heavy, if you think about it. That's like almost, well, that's like a half ton right there. Um, so you have to be careful around horses. They're known for their wide, large face, and they're gonna have a flat forehead and big round cheeks. And you can see this guy in this picture, he's got very round cheeks. And of course, he has that flashy halter. And so it makes him look even, um, his face look even more well-defined. So like I said, he has a muscly, stocky build, and they can be any color combination, including face colorings and leg markings. Their skills that they're best at, they're a great all-around horse. So they're going to be generally good at every sport. That doesn't mean they're the best at every sport or every horse is best at that sport, but they're generally, they can try it and accomplish it. Um, without you know, hurting themselves or hurting other people. So if you wanna be a barrel racer or a jumping, uh, you know, jumping rider, or they can even race, even though of course their skills on the other side, they can't run for a long time, but they are fast. So that makes them good for like rodeo because they can go short distances very fast. So um, they're not gonna be great great maybe at certain things, but they can be really good at them. So that's a great horse to keep to learn on um, is a quarter horse. And they're also really good at gaining weight and holding weight. Um, so 
they can, um, you know, they're easy, easier to take care of. So our next, oh, do we have any questions about the core horse? No? Okay. Okay. Our next horse is going to be the thoroughbred. And this actually looks like my horse, Forrest. He's a tall, sleek bodied, um, he, he looks a little thin, but that's just because he's um, very well muscled. Like he, runners are usually very sleek. Um, they're very fast and they have a lot of muscle, but that not a lot of fat on them. So that's a characteristic of thoroughbreds. They can be medium to very tall. So they can actually be taller than 16 too, but that's kind of the range. Um, they're generally, um, depending on what part they are in like training, they're gonna be a little bit leaner. And then when they're taking time off, they're gonna gain weight back. Uh, their face is narrow, but usually very long, okay? And then their body type is muscled, but slim. So they're usually got that um, very sleek runner's body. And they can actually have any color combination as well, but um, they don't tend to have a ton of coloring um, because they're just, they're not really bred to, they're, re they're bred to go fast as opposed to look, looking flashy. So um, their skills, they, they're very fast for long periods of time so they can run like miles. Um, and they're really good at jumping and that's really because they're so tall. Um, and they have long, strong legs. They're not very good at barrel racing or pole bending just because they're very tall and that the barrel is so low and they're turning a very, fast circle or pole bending, which makes them go very fast left and right. And it can be hard if you're so tall, you know, you can't really change direction. There are horses, of course, that are good at everything. Um, but generally, if you're wanting to do a barrel racing sport, you're not going to pick up thoroughbred, even though they're very fast. Okay. Our next one are Arabians. And these are really um, some flashy animals. There's a lot of people that love Arabians. So his characteristic, they're usually about medium to small. So I didn't say that before in there. They're usually small. So they're very dainty, delicate. Um, they don't get very heavy or very tall. They have a very narrow face and they have that cute little nose. So, sorry. <coughs> They have a cute little nose and people love that little tiny nose. They're usually um, body type, they're usually, usually slim or they have a fat body. I have yet to really find an Arabian that's kind of like medium. He's either fat <laughs> or slim. In coloring, they can be any, but not often with patterns or variations. So you're not gonna find a lot of, um, a, a lot of um, Arabians with um, patterns or spots. Um, hey, Lauren. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Are you fine? Your volume changed a little bit. It kind of sounds robotic for some reason. Uh oh. Uh, let me. Did it fix? Okay. Not yet. It's still the same. Any better? Mm -mm, it's still the same. Let me oh. see. Is it any different? Um, not for me. Um, I'm gonna double check with our Girl Scouts that are on. Um, let's see, are y'all having any volume issues on your end, girls? No. No? No. Okay, then it might be me, Lauren, so continue. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, sometimes, okay. oh, I think I heard it. You hear it? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that happens where it like okay. comes back. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll just keep going with it. <laughs> yeah. So they tend not to have spots and variations like that. So their skills, they are very energetic. They're very fast and they cool down really fast. Um, so Arabians, of course, were bred in the desert. And so it gets really hot there. So they're bred not to get hot. Uh, which is really cool. Their skin is different in other ways um, than say like a quarter horse so that they get cool. 
And their worst skill is sometimes they're, they have a bad attitude, um, depending on, you know, if they don't want to do it or if they really do want to do it, they can get really snotty about, you know, being pushy and stuff like that. So not always, but sometimes. Okay. And our next, am, uh, our next horse is the paint horse. So this is actually our last horse, but we're going to talk about this one a little bit extra. They're usually about medium height, um, 15 to 16 hands. They can range in that general size range. The cool thing about them is because they have white all over, they can usually have blue eyes. Um, quarter horses can too, but generally they're gonna be a paint horse that has blue eyes. Um, and they can have one blue eye and one brown eye or two blue eyes or like a partial blue eye too, which is really cool because half of their eye can be blue and the other half can be brown. Um, they have a stocky build and they have a lot of variations. So they have a lot of different um, spots that we can talk about in a second. And they're generally good at all sports. Um, they might be better at some versus others. And the worst problem though that they have is they, they're really good at getting sunburned. So you have to get them a mask or you have to get them a body shield um, because they'll get sunburned. Okay, so these are the different types of paint horses. Um, I'm not an expert in paint horses, but um, there is some definite key signs. So Tobiano is going to have the white over its um, butt and haunches and usually over the shoulder versus the Overo, which is going to be mostly in the stomach. And then uh, the Sabino is just in the belly. The splashed white is going to be, um, it's very similar, but more white than the Sabino. Uh, the Tovero is actually a beautiful mix of the Tobiano and the Overo. And the Rabicano is, is just kind of that white underneath the belly. It's like very freckled and frosted, but it's only going to be right there. So those are some variations. And if you don't know the variation, it's okay. Most times people will tell you um, what they are if you, if you ask. And the Tobiano and the Overo, these are the patterns that they can follow. So the Tobiano is going to be, um, I mean, they can have any pattern, but you can see that most of that white is going to be over the shoulders and over the haunches, not really in, um, except for that, the two at the end on the bottom right have a lot of white in their stomach, but not a lot versus the Overo, which is going to be mostly in the stomach area and not really on the hind of the butt or the top of the head. It, but of course, if there's going to be a variation, I mean, there's no perfect rule to anything. So those are the types and they're always ever changing. So, you know, if there's a rule today, Tomorrow it'll change. So, um, but it's great to just see the different colors of the horses. So what I ask you guys are what are your favorite colors and what are your favorite variations of the horses? So I, I can leave this one up and then I can change it. So um, Kaylee or did I say it right? Kylie. Kylie, sorry, Kylie, what's your favorite type of horse? Hmm. I have more than one favorite color. My first favorite color is white. White? Awesome. And Abigail, Giggles, what's your favorite type of What's your favorite type of horse? Um, I like the dapple gray. You like the dapple gray? There's also the other one too. Um, I don't know if you've seen that one. There's those type too. But the dapple gray is awesome because they're mostly that dark gray with the white hairs that come up in circles. But it's not like a true pattern, it's, it, it changes. And then, um, Caitlin, what is your favorite type of horse color? Bay and bay roam. Awesome, bay and bay roam. 
I love the Bay Roan. That is my next horse that I'm going to get is a Bay Roan. And I love it when it has a little bit of frosting, but just on the butt. So have you guys ever ridden a horse before? Elena has. I know she has. And Abigail, tell us, um, we'll go from bottom to top for me. Caitlin, tell us about that, the horse that you rode last or your favorite time, either or. Um, like when I, I forgot the place name, but I remember where like it's, where Snoopy is, I think. But the, my, when I rode the horse, um, I could ride a small horse and a tall horse. So I chose the tall horse and someone had it up pull the horse, like pull the horse in circles. My, and my brother rode the small one um, and my dad gets to pull it. Oh, so, you, so you, got a, you got some help from a friend pulling you around a little bit. Do you ever want to ride by yourself with no help? Yeah, I wanted to learn how to ride the horse of the a horse and earn the badge, but um, I couldn't because the coronavirus. Yeah, but hey, there's still plenty of time. Once this thing passes, there's going to be a bunch of horses looking for little girls to come and ride them. So definitely uh, keep looking and keep the passion for horses. Abigail, do you want to tell us about your best time you ever rode a horse? Sure. Um, I rode a Palomino once. And what did you do? Um, I was just on a lead rope. That's fun. It was fun though. Yeah. And do you, when you ride next, do you want to learn how to ride by yourself? Yes. What do you want to do after you learn by your, learn how to ride by yourself? I don't know. You don't know? Oh. And what about you? Um, I feel like I'm going to say it wrong again. It's not Kaylee. Kylie. Huh? Kylie? Kylie? Oh. Ky uh, Kylie. 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 <laughs> Ooh, Kylie, sorry. Have you ever ridden a horse before? No, but I want to ride one because it's so pretty. There's like girl boy horses. Yes. I just want to ride a horse, but I've never been on one. I see like um like where horses are been before, like the um whatever they're called. But I never been on one. Well, one day. I'm near yeah. sand hills, but I never been on one ever in my life. Well, we got to get you on one. At some point, you got to get out to camp way back during the summer and ride. That would be fun. And Elena, tell us about the best time you had riding a horse. Um, the best time I ever rode a horse was the only time. It's where I went to a day camp, and my horse was a strawberry roan named Roni. And we rode in a big long line of horses, but only one horse needed a line because it was a not very nice horse. Oh. That happens sometimes. Sometimes there's grumpy horses, just like there's grumpy people. And sometimes that horse either has to be in the front or the back of the line because he can be grumpy and we don't want anybody getting around him. Never put a grumpy horse in the middle for sure. But that's awesome that you got to ride a strawberry roan. They are so pretty. Now, here's a thought, guys. If you could be, and I don't know if you guys know this, but if you could do any sort of horseback riding activity, what would you do? So, or a horseback riding professional. So if you wanted to barrel race, or if you've seen racing before, or roping, or jumping, what would you do if you were if you were a professional rider, what would you do? So we'll go with Elena. What do you think? I would just ride my horse. Just ride your horse. Just be a professional rider. 
That's awesome. A trainer, maybe. That's a profession as a trainer. You train horses to do the best things. Awesome. All right, Kylie, what would you, if you were professional, what would you uh, do with your horse? Um, if I was a professional, I would feed the horses, ride them, like train ride them. And I'm trying to think of like one. And um, comb them, like brush them. That is very important to brush them. So that's a great job. All right, Abigail, what would you do if you were a professional rider? I would um, just trail ride. Just trail ride. That's fun. Some people really like to go places with their horses and camp with their horses and take other people trail riding and, you know, all over mountains and prairies. So that, that's a cool job. Caitlin. You were a professional horseback rider. Who would? What would you do? I would like take other people and, and like other people's horses and and if they don't know how to ride horses, I would teach them how to ride horses. And then when they grow up, like and then they will know how to teach other people. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great job is to be a trainer of people as opposed to a trainer of horses. You can instruct them how to ride horses. That's perfect. That's a great job to have. You get to meet a lot of new people and you, got, you get to help a lot of people. That's a great job. All right. So guys, we're kind of going to wrap up here. Do you have any final thoughts about horses, horse colors, or horse breeds? Did anybody learn a new color today for their horse? Either one of these or one of these. Does anybody know? Uh, oh, Caitlin, yes. On the first page of the, yeah. Um, I learned all the gray ones and the white one. Yes, the white one. I've never seen a rose gray in person before, but I, I'm looking forward to it. That's the thing, you gotta like think about all these colors and check them off like a horsey bingo. That would be fun, I would play that. Elena. Oh, I'm sorry. The horse that was not that nice was a rose gray. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. I hope it doesn't mean that all rose gray horses are pretty grumpy, right? <laughs> yep. There was a different rose gray that was super nice. Oh, good. But it was also the other rose gray's mate. That, oh. Yeah. Yin and yang, best friends can be opposite sometimes, right? All right. So we're going to wrap up. I'm going to say thank you guys for joining with us today. Now, for our next steps, you do have to go and actually take care of and try your hand at riding. Uh, so that might be something to look forward to for the next, you know, couple months after this whole thing. And if you have um, any questions, just please let us know. Definitely uh, tune in here uh, again sometime and we will see you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Adios. Adios. Bye.